So I've started a new project. Like many other people, you'll just buy something because you think, ah, oh, that'll do. So I bought a or an Arduino Gerbil CNC Shield kit, and it came with three stepper motors. For the price of it, I thought, let's have it and have a go with it. This is one of the stepper motors. There's three identical ones that came with it. It's NEMA 17 and it has a part number on it. So like everybody else, we'll have a quick scan through all the videos and what have you and look at advice from people and then you'll stick 12 volts into it because that's what everybody seems to do. But since mine hasn't got any voltage rating on it or anything, I thought, well, I want to have a look and see what it's rated at. Just because there was no specific information that I could see about it. So, I went onto their website. Well, I went onto a website which listed this motor. And here it is, whether well, you can see that or not. There we go, yeah, you can see that. There's the stepper motor there, look here. Two phase hybrid stepper motor, 17 HS series, 42 millimeter, 1.8 degrees. Anyway, my motor, what I've got here is the 4401. So here's all the specifications for it step angle, yeah, great. Motor length, rated current, phase resistance, phase inductance, holding torque. Detent torque, rotor inertia, lead wire, motor weight. Don't see any voltage yet. No voltage. No voltage. But it is there. The voltage is staring at you right in the face. Right here it says, look here. Yeah? 1.7 amps. And what? Let's highlight the right one. 1 1.5 ohms of resistance and 1.7 amps current, maximum. Oh, the rated, shall we say, rated current. So how do I get the voltage from that? Well, let's have a look. Let's get a better angle out for you. For you. Let's, uh, I don't know, can you, can you read it? I can't really tell, I think you can read all that, to be fair. Yeah. Angular schmangular. Right, so this is a 17HS4401. I know that, because on the sticker it says 17HS4401. So we've confirmed that. Then we looked at the website and we saw it's got a 1.7 amp total. And it's got 1.5 ohms of resistance per phase. Now it's a two phase hybrid stepper motor. So that means there's going to be 3 ohms of resistance total to bring it up to that amperage rating. You know, that's the way I figure it anyway. Because if it isn't, it's even lower power than what I'm doing here. So I'm taking it as dual phase, we're, 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 we're calculating both the phases together. And in series that will be 3 ohms of resistance. And the reason I'm doing that is, is because if you want full holding torque on that, you'll have to have both of the phases powered at the same time, and that will give it the best holding torque. So, all electrics work with two laws. I don't know if you can see that. Now you can see it. So you've got Watt's Law and Ohm's Law. And they're called a law because you cannot change them. It doesn't matter what, doesn't matter what you do, that is final. <laughs> That's just the way it is. It's a nifty little thing that we, that we will learn. In the mechanics trade, we get to draw these two triangles. And the way they explain it is, draw a pair of tips on the board pointy tits and then put a bra onto those tits so you can see the t-shape so that's the top of the bra and there's the bra strap coming over and then in those tits draw 
what are virgins? Virgins are rare. Now when you say that to a class of 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds, wherever they may be, they tend not to forget that unless they're completely not paying attention. Or just don't want to learn at all. So they're laws and they are final. Now we know we've got 1.7 amps and 3 ohms. We know that because we're putting it into the ohms law section here. And with any two figures, be it watts, amps, volts or resistance, you can work out any other value with these two sets of laws. The laws are, if one's above the other, you do a division. And if one's beside the other, you do a multiplication. A multiplication, yeah, I can say that, can So on this side here, you do watts divided by amps equals volts. Or watts divided by volts equals amps. Or amps times volts equals watts. Same on this side, but obviously with the different values. Volts divided by amps equals resistance. Volts divided by resistance equals amps. Amps times resistance equals volts. Get your calculators out and work all that out. I just did. So now I know that this motor is a 5 volt motor. That's what it's rated at. I guarantee you. That is what it's rated at. So you can see all the rest of these figures filled out here. I'm not going to go through them one by one just to show you, although I might. I don't want to bore the pants off of you with some of our electrical lesson. But people need to know what voltage their motors run at. So let's say for instance we put 12 volts in it like the people say to all over the internet. What is the implications of putting 12 volts in? So I've done two 12 volt multiplications down here. I've done one 12 volt calculation using 1.7 amps as the maximum. And then I've used one calculation using 3 ohms as the maximum. So if you pump in 12 volts and allow it just to go to the resistance, it will take 4 amps, I guarantee you. It will just flow out at 4 amps. Honestly, 4 times 12 equals 48 watts. Now, since the standard rating is 8.67 watts, that would be 5 times the power running through those circuits, and they're going to get hot. So you would definitely need some kind of active cooling, cooling that motor down to stop it from overheating, because it's going to overheat at five times its power. Now let's say for instance you used your step motor drivers and you, you knew that you had to limit the amperage to 1.7 amps, so you limited it to 1.7 amps. At that point then, you would want a resistance of 7.06 ohms. And you haven't. You've only got 3 ohms. I've measured it. It is 1.5 ohms per uh, phase. But if you manage to get that ohm rating by putting 2 ohms resistor on each circuit, and these have to be 20 watt power ohm, the power resistors, then you could get it up to 20 watts, which is only double the power. It would be advisory to have some kind of passive heating on there, uh, heat sinking to cool it down a little bit but it's only double the power so I think this is where they're getting around it uh, they might be burning motors out if they're trying to pump 1.7 amps through that I think what's happening is they're waiting for the motor to heat up obviously with heat you get more resistance so they're bringing the motor to the point of burning out to produce 20, 20 watts of power and a lot of people are saying that in one of these motors at 12 volts anything lower and you'll get less holding torque. <laughs> I know that because you are now overclocking the motor but you really need to do something about it to uh, stop these from burning out. 
Now I've got a 19.2 volt power supply that I'm going to use. Okay, so if I'm going to use 19.2 volts, there's some precautions that I need to take. So for instance, if I decide to limit the current to 1.7 amps, I can produce 32 watts of power, which is three times the initial power rating of that motor. But clearly at that, I'm going to need some kind of heat sinking. You know, I, I really could do with passive heating, heat sink at least. So probably aluminium fins attached to it and ideally a fan blowing over the motor. Also, to gain that amount of power, I would have to add some 32 watt power resistors to each, to each winding at 4.15 ohms. And they're quite expensive. They're quite big power resistors. So I'd need six of those to run three of those. But at that, I would increase that power by three. Now, you might want to get a NEMA 23. But, let's see what that is going to bring me up to. So we've got 40 Newton centimetres. That would bring it up to 120 Newton centimetres. Or detent torque, 2.2 Newton centimetres. So we can see that. So that would be 6.6 .6 Newton centimetres of torque. I don't think detent torque stops, does it? No, that, that doesn't change. But yes, we could increase the power by threefold. Quite safely, I think. Now, if I really wanted to get rambunctious about things, I could run it at 3 ohms. At that point, then, I could bump it up to 6.4 ohms. That's uh, 6.4 amps. But to run it at 6.4 amps, I would need bigger step motor drivers. A lot bigger step motor drivers. At that point, I could run it at 122 watts, which is 14 times the power. Now, if I was going to do that, I would definitely need a water cooling jacket around it and some kind of radiator with fans blowing over it constantly for each one. And even then, I suspect it would probably burn out. I would probably then need to uh, take the back end off to see where all these wires are, see if there's any vulnerable shoulder connections and what have you. Probably bring them further out, make a custom back plate for it. Maybe make a custom front plate for it, maybe have the water cooling veins going through it and all sorts of things just to get a NEMA 17 up to that kind of power. But again, nothing's impossible and you could definitely overrate that to 222 watts. Now I have here somewhere, well this is part of it, I've got a NEMA 34 here and I don't think it takes much more than 122 watts. So that's motor voltages and what you need to know. The main thing you need to know is that's a 5 volt motor. 1.5 amps and 5, 5 volts but it's a 5 volt motor. If you want to run that at 12 volts it might be a good idea if you're doing a long job on it to, to run it with heat sinks on. Because if you get it wrong, you could be running at 48 watts, and that's five times its power rating. But if you get it right, you could be running at 20 watts. And if you're lucky, you could be running at 10 watts. <laughs> or just under. So you could be running at the same wattage. But most people say when they're running those at 12 volts, they get more power than they're running at 5 volts. So they're definitely overclocking the motors. So be aware. Or I'll just have to read for around about way too much time when there's YouTube videos that could tell me this, this, this kind of thing. So here's the video for you. If you want to know how many volts to put inside your 
NEMA 17, NEMA 23, NEMA 34, whatever size motor, if you've got an amp rating and a resistance, you can work out your voltage. You don't need to be told what voltage to put into it.